This video is brought to you by Escape the Invasion. Hey brother! Ben, as perhaps you have heard, my wife Beth and I are expecting twins next spring. Which has been simultaneously the most exciting and also scariest thing that has ever happened to me. They're going to outnumber us. Obviously, it has been taking up a ton of my brain space lately, and since most of that space is usually just filled with extremely useful Harry Potter trivia, it is no surprise that the clown princes of Hogwarts, Fred and George, have been on my mind. And before you ask, no, we are 100% not naming them Fred and George if they are boys. But yes, they are identical. Anyway, since I've been dwelling on the subject so much lately, I thought it would be fun to celebrate the twins and count down the top 10 Fred and George moments in Harry Potter. Hey brother! Question! Have you ever wondered what you would do if you found yourself in the middle of a post-apocalyptic world ravished by a deadly virus? Well then great news! Escape the Invasion is for you. Escape the Invasion is essentially an at-home escape room, except exceptionally more immersive. Basically, each month you get a cool box like this in the mail, and it's full of a bunch of codes and clues that you need to decipher or break to complete that month's assignment. Personally, I played it last night, and yeah, it's basically an at-home escape room. But while I love escape rooms, I always just roll my eyes whenever they get to the part where they're telling you the lore around whatever you're breaking out of or rescuing. It's just like, Oh, let me get in and solve the puzzles already. But this is very different. For this, the lore is very important. You need to understand the story and the characters in order to break the clues and advance in the game. Which, for me, adds a whole new layer of fun. And if that sounds like fun to you too, you can head over to escapetheinvasion.com slash scb to get 20% off your first month. Again, that is escapetheinvasion.com slash scb, 20% off your first month. Find out if you can survive the alien apocalypse. Link in the description down below. Hope you check it out. Fred and George are two of the most popular characters across all of Harry Potter. And while they may seem like just the hilarious comic relief who pop up every now and then, I think they serve a much larger role in terms of the overall themes of the entire story. Like honestly, combined, they might be the most pure representation of wizard culture of any other character. Because at its best, the wizarding world is inherently kind of silly. We don't personally get to spend a lot of time there when it's like that because Harry's story gets dark pretty quickly. But no matter how bad things get, the twins always stay positive. They break the tension and remind everyone what they're fighting for, that this darkness is not normal. And with that said, let's just jump right in. Number 10. He's not Fred, I am. Honestly, woman, you call yourself armor. Yes, of course, you knew this had to be on here. I mean, the twins' introduction to the entire story as they board Platform 9 and 3 quarters is one of the most memorable. It perfectly introduces the characters, and more importantly, it is one of Harry's very first solo experiences in the Wizarding World, and it's one of humor. Something I'm sure that 11-year-old Harry desperately needed in that moment as he was facing facing down, missing the train. It's also his first real encounter with just the Weasley family at all, and you know, they go on to be pretty important. I'm only joking, I am Fred. Number nine. Next Door Neighbors? A scene tragically left out of the movies. This happens just after Mrs. Weasley finds out Ron has become a prefect and goes as follows. His, but Ron, you're not. Ron held up his badge. Mrs. Weasley let out a shriek just like Hermione's. Oh, I don't believe it, I don't believe it, oh Ron, I wonderful what are Fred and I, next door neighbors? Said George indignantly as his mother pushed him aside and flung her arms around her youngest son. For whatever reason, following the rules at Hogwarts is just like on blast throughout the entire series. The more you follow the rules, the less likable you are. <coughs> Percy. And yet, of course, this is something Mrs. Weasley would want of her sons. I just love that this should be such a great moment for Ron, and yet it is also just completely undercut by the attitude of literally everyone around him. Number eight. We're identical. This takes place just before the flight of the Seven Potters. Everyone has taken their Polyjuice Potion and upon transforming into Harry, Fred and George look at each other and exclaim, Wow! 
we're identical. This might sound like just a little throwaway joke, but given its place in the story and the very, very dangerous flight they are all about to embark on, I really thought it deserved a spot on this list because it really just demonstrates why the twins are so great. Because in that moment, everyone should rightfully be terrified of the flight to come even before they know that the Death Eaters are up there. And yet, as ever, they are able to light a little spark of laughter and make it all just a little bit more bearable. Yeah, I don't really fancy this color. Number seven. Gred and Forge. Again, I don't know why they left this out of the movie, but allow me. Why aren't you wearing yours, Ron? George demanded. Come on, get it on, that lovely and warm. I hate maroon, Ron moaned half-heartedly as he pulled it over his head. Hmm, you haven't got a letter on yours, George observed. I suppose she thinks you don't forget your name, but we're not stupid. We know we're called Gred and Forge. Yes, okay, maybe the stakes on year one Christmas Day are not quite as high as the Battle of the Seven Potters, but I still remember the very first time I read this line and just burst out laughing. What really makes it stand out though is the way they lean into the sweaters from their mothers because by all accounts, Ron and Percy have the expected reaction you'd have to getting the same sweater from your mother every year. Instead, however, even though it would appear they're making fun of the F and G on their sweaters, they force their brothers to wear them and insist that Percy, yes, Percy, have breakfast with them because it's Christmas and family is first. Number six, holy. Holy, as in how George feels after losing one of his ears just one hour earlier. I'm holy. His first words after permanently losing a body part are a joke, so his twin won't be so worried about him. Yes, it's a joke, but it's also an incredibly selfless act of kindness to put the emotional needs of his brother above his own personal physical pain, which has got to be really high because again, he just lost his ear. Fred, to his credit, does not miss a beat and immediately picks up on the joke and even acts insulted that the joke was a little too low hanging fruit. The whole wide world of irrelated humor. And you go for I'm holy. Number five, not letting Harry pay. After the Triwizard Tournament, Harry does the very Harry thing and donates all of his 1,000 Galleon prize winnings to the Weasley twins so that they can start a joke shop, something they accomplish in just two years. First of all, I just love that Harry invests in this at all. Like of all the things he could have done with his money, he decides that laughter in the face of Voldemort is the number one thing people are going to need. <laughs> and honestly, who else could he possibly trust with such a task? But this is just representative of how much Harry understands Voldemort and what it takes to beat him. Because in the midst of Voldemort rising to power, Weasley Wizard Wheezes opens and is successful while every other shop is going out of business. Fred reckons people need a laugh these days. I reckon he's right. That alone is already pretty impressive, but the Weasleys go one step further when Harry finally comes to visit the shop where they refuse to let him pay for anything. This is probably a fairly common practice to just like give your investors a free ride, but Harry fully intends to pay and they just will not take his money, which I just love. Although maybe they know they're just gonna make it back on Ron. How much for me? Five galleons. I'm your brother. 10 galleons. Also, just real quick honorable mention to You Know Pooh, the constipation sensation that's gripping the nation. <laughs> Number four, busting Harry out of the Dursleys. Okay, here's what Ron and the twins know about the situation. Harry has not responded to some of Ron's letters. That's it. Okay, also they know he was caught doing magic. Once. <laughs> Either way, their solution to this problem is to steal a flying car, fly it all the way across the country to a house they've never been to and rescue Harry from his bedroom. Now, as it turns out, this was the exact right move to make. But when you think about it, their information wasn't even accurate. They thought the Dursleys were to blame for everything, but actually it was Dobby. Either way, the massive overreaction to simple bad news and the use of muggle tricks to get through some of those locks, that is mischief enough for number four. Which brings us to number three, 
shutting down Zachariah Smith. Yes, I won't blame you if you've forgotten this tiny particular moment as it is a bit fleeting and not particularly hilarious, but I do think it is a very powerful moment. At the first meeting of Dumbledore's army at the Hogshead, before they even have that name yet, Harry is struggling to explain to the crowd how difficult it is to fight the dark arts, and largely they just seem interested in hearing more about how Cedric died. I'm not going to talk about Cedric, so if that's why you're here, you might as well clear out now. Harry, in his humility, refuses to take very much responsibility at all for most of his very heroic actions across the first few books. <laughs> Nonetheless, however, the crowd is bolstering him until Zachariah Smith speaks up. The exchange goes like this. No, said Harry. No, okay, I know I did bits of it without help, but the point I'm trying to make is, are you trying to weasel out of showing us any of this stuff? Said Zachariah Smith. And although Harry has many defenders, it is Fred and George who speak up. That's not what he said, snarled Fred Weasley. Would you like us to clean out your ears for you? Inquired George, pulling out a long and lethal looking metal instrument from inside one of the Zonko's bags. Or any part of your body, really. We're not fussy where we stick this. First of all, what do you really think that metal instrument was. And second of all, yes, at this point, a bunch of people have sort of yelled at Zachariah Smith for countering Harry, but Fred and George, to me, stick out for a few reasons. First of all, their support of Harry in this situation carries a lot of weight, because in all likelihood, I think Fred and George are probably the most popular kids in school. They are beaters on the Gryffindor Quidditch team. They are very talented wizards who love showing off all of their new inventions. They are known class clowns and perhaps most importantly are among the oldest students at the bar. Now, I'm sure I don't need to explain to you how seniority in high school works, but basically the higher your year, the more seniority you have. And Fred and George, with all of their social status, would typically be the natural leaders in this situation. Instead, they, talented upperclassmen who are good at magic, choose to support Harry as their leader, which speaks not just volumes about them, but volumes to the room about Harry. And quickly after, Everyone signs up for Dumbledore's army. Number two, giving Harry the Marauder's Map. I mean, what did you expect? If there's one plot point involving the twins that has the greatest effect on the rest of the story, this is it. Not only does this act affect so much of the rest of the story, but it is also insanely generous of them. They're only fifth years at the time, and even though, sure, they've memorized where all the secret passages are, they could still use the map to, like, see where everyone else is at any given moment. They could still use it for another two and a half years, and instead, they give it to Harry. Of course, the fact that they had the map the whole time always brings up the question, how did they not see Pettigrew sharing a bed with Ron? A question our good buddy Seamus Gorman did an excellent job of answering, but the short answer to which I subscribe to is that only the Marauders could see the Marauders on the map. This scene right here where Harry can see Pettigrew, <laughs> doesn't happen in the books. Doesn't count. Which leaves us with just number one, the Great Escape. Seriously, what else could it even be? I mean, there's not even much more to say about it as it largely speaks for itself, but Fred and George's exit from the castle in Order of the Phoenix is legendary. Not only do they set up a ton of fireworks for the school, which serves as advertising for their future shop, but they also basically incite a rebellion in everyone, from Peeves, who would never listen to anybody, to the students and even the staff. Personally, I really love the small Swamp they set up in the corner and extra extra love that when Flitwick finally removes it he leaves a small corner of it as a tribute to the talented wizards who set it up. And there you go guys the top 10 Fred and George moments in Harry Potter. I would also like to give one last final honorable mention to uh, in year one when they enchant the snowballs to hit Quirrell on the back of the head because inadvertently they're hitting Voldemort in the face with snowballs. And I love that. But Ben, my question for you and everyone else is, what are your favorite Fred and George moments? Did I leave any out? Let me know in the towel section down below. Guys, if you have not checked out the new special offers on our Patreon, now is the time to do so. You can still take advantage of all of them as long as you signed up by the end of October. And if you want to be in on the first round of the Super Carlin Brothers Shirt Club, you also need to sign up by the end of October. That is this Thursday. Link in the description. Hope you check it out. Thanks, as 
as always for watching today's video please remember to leave a like on it if you haven't already and subscribe so you don't miss any future harry potter action from us if you'd like to see us rank all the defense against the dark arts teachers you can check out this video right here or if you'd like to see the top 10 cringiest moments in the harry potter movies you can check out this video right here but ben that's all i've got for you today man i will see you in another live